Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 5th, 2017. My gosh, where did July go to? And first up, this is from Washington Post. Uh, a man digging in Canadian oil sands in 2011 struck the fossil with a backhoe, as the Washington, report, Washington Post reported in May. A sea once covered that region in northeast Alberta. People had discovered bones there before most of the aquatic reptiles like plesiosaurs or ichthyosaurs, but the nodosaur was the first dinosaur discovered in the Alberta mine. Researchers hypothesized that the animal tumbled into the river and died. The unusual thing about this is this animal is so well preserved it almost looks like a statue of a dinosaur and it's in such good shape um, that they cannot easily see what the skeletal structure is like they're trying but because of the density of the rock, sometimes the skeletal structure is kind of hard to get a look at. But I'll put, a, put several pictures up here of the uh, animal itself. And what took so long since they discovered in 2011 is it's so close to the density of the surrounding stone that it's very, very hard to chisel this thing out and not harm it. As a matter of fact, the backhoe operator that um, found this uh, cut off the back of the tail and a little bit of the hind end of this creature. But what was left is really exquisite, and it uh, it does. It looks just like a... Uh, somebody made a statue and because of the fact it is preserved with the soft tissue although it's not the original soft tissue it's obviously been replaced because it is a fossil it's been replaced by rock they've got enough information from it to give some really good guess as to the color of the pigments that were um, in the skin and what this uh, dinosaur w uh, looked like so yeah if you get a chance check that out as usual all the links to all the articles will be in the description below and next up from my friend Tom H. U.S. Army set for new lightweight combat helmet. The U.S. Army is planning to deploy a combat helmet that is 22% lighter than the current helmet used by soldiers. The advanced combat helmet generation 2 is said to weigh less and provide the same amount of protection according to the Army. The helmet uses high molecular weight polyethylene which is lighter material than Kevlar. In addition, the Army says that new, the new helmet can stop rounds from a 9 millimeter handgun as well as shell fragments. Yeah, don't think that these uh, helmets being uh, the way they're made are going to stop anything like a rifle bullet, like a, a 308 or even a you know, 556, but um, they can guard against shrapnel and other things like that. A contract for up to 98 million to develop the helmets over the next five years was awarded to Revision Military located in Vermont, so I like that, that they're keeping the manufacture in the U.S. Too many things are being shipped overseas. Um, as a new renewed focus on research and development, our goal is revolutionary leap in technology for personal protection equipment in the future, said Lieutenant Kathy M. Brown, production manager for Soldier Protective Equipment, in a press release. While the helmet's weight depends on its size, the Army said that a large helmet will weigh under 2.5 pounds, roughly 12 ounces less than the current helmet in use. And last up, I'd been waiting to do this to get a little bit closer, but now we've only got a few weeks to go. But I would like to talk about the Eclipse, and I think the best site, I'll give you links to two of them, um, including space.com, but the one I'm on right now and the one I would recommend is called eclipse2017.org, and it goes down and it lists each individual state um, that the Eclipse will at least touch on or cross across, and if you look at the various states, it seems like the uh, best um, amount of total time for Eclipse, if you want to actually see the longest one you possibly can, best to be in southern Missouri, southern Illinois, or western Kentucky if you want to see the longest and that's around two minutes 40 seconds. You'll still get a pretty good view everywhere you know that it crosses across the US and it's in totality but they predict uh, a lot of people coming from overseas to see it, a lot of traffic jams in the area and stuff. Personally I haven't decided yet whether I will either watch it online probably to get the best view, maybe watch it if uh, uh, a different uh, planetariums or stuff like that are streaming it Surely there's probably going to be several sites streaming it live or maybe do the pinhole camera thing. I'm still not so confident myself. I don't like the idea, although there are, I, absolutely I agree with the uh, experts that you can buy the right kind of eclipse glasses or use certain uh, numbers of uh, welding helmets and see it total, in total safety. And even during total eclipse, you can uh, look at it with your bare eyes. I still don't want to take the chance. Uh, my vision is very precious to me, so I'm going to play it extra, extra, extra safe and either watch it streaming or watch it um, uh, and just look up. I mean, just Google because uh, probably the best time to do that would be probably a few days before 
it happens and find at that time what the best streaming sites are now because I found those can really if I try to give you links right now I found in the past that some of them can not really be that great they can't handle the traffic or something like that so I would recommend doing that maybe a few days before the eclipse but um, yeah the uh, let me let me give you the stats from the top of the page right here too it is going to be August 21st and it's going to last a total of about an hour and a half crossing across the United States it's going to spend about one hour and 30 minutes on US soil and then go off into the Atlantic Ocean on August 21st so and then the various times for each area are going to obviously be different depending on the state so look up your individual state on here if it's one of the ones that the eclipse is going to cross and uh, see what happens from there and so uh, um, and that's it from here the moon's shadow continues on over the Atlantic Ocean this is from the article not to touch any more land before deftly lifting off the earth's surface near Africa about 75 minutes after it leaves US soil so anyway that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week <laughs>